Today I'm going to be discussing command mode, ranges, and the G command in Vim. Now this will be geared toward more newer to intermediate Vim users, maybe not brand new users, maybe you got the basics now, maybe you know some of the motion commands, you know how to get in and out of the various modes, insert mode, normal mode, uh, visual mode, but today I wanted to show you some of the more powerful things you can do once you start playing around with command mode, ranges, and especially the G command. So I've got my xmonad config opened here in Vim as just an example, something to play around with. And to get into command mode in Vim, of course, you do colon and then the name of the command. And there are hundreds of built-in commands here in Vim. For example, if I did colon and then the word write, that writes the file, of course, colon exit, exits Vim, colon split, does a horizontal split, colon vs, does a vertical split, etc, etc. But sometimes you want to run not built-in Vim commands, sometimes you want to run shell commands. How do you do that? Well, you do that with colon exclamation point to signify this is a shell command. And then if I do pwd for print working directory, watch what happens. We get the output from pwd uh, printed out right here in Vim. You see it says press enter. And if I press enter, that output goes away. And of course, you know, if you wanted to get something with a lot of output, as an example, let me do a colon and then exclamation cat. And let me cat out something. How about my bash RC? You know, it's a very lengthy document. You know, it gets catted out here, although it's not very useful. I can't really scroll back. The most useful thing with these shell commands, though, is sometimes you want to take the output of a shell command and actually insert it into your document. How do you do that? Well, there is a built-in Vim command called read. So do colon read and then exclamation and then the shell command that you want to take the output and insert into this document. Let's do date. So right now I'm on line one. What this is going to do, we're going to run the date command, take the output and insert it on the line after the line I'm currently on. I'm currently on line one. So, you know, it basically creates a new line after line one and places the output there. Now, if I wanted to run this command, but not necessarily on the line that my cursor was currently on, I mean, I could specify a line. I could go to the beginning here and do colon 12 to specify line 12, read, and then exclamation date. Now, this is going to basically say go to line 12 and then run read exclamation date and then place the output on the line after line 12. So it creates a new line after line 12, and that's where the output from the date command gets placed. If I wanted to run that same command, but instead of 12, I could do dollar symbol for the last line of the document. We go to the last line, and a new line is inserted with the output from the date command. Let me U a few times to undo everything we've done so I get back to the original document here. One of the most useful built-in Vim commands is the global substitution command. So if I do colon s slash and then the word I want to go out and find, so I'll call it old slash and then the word I want to replace old with, I'll type new slash g. That is the format for that command. That is a global substitution. So it basically says on the line we're on, find the word old, replace it with new. Now, uh, most people will probably want to run this command, though, but typically you want to run it on multiple lines. Sometimes you want to run it on every line in the document. Every line in the document, the alias for that is the percent sign. So do colon percent s slash, and let's do this as an example, import. I have a lot of lines that have the word import slash. I'm going to replace import with export slash g. Watch all them imports become exports. But the cool thing about this is you can actually set ranges. So instead of doing S for the line we're on or percent for every line in the document, you can specify ranges. And the way ranges work, if I do something like, I don't know, 11 comma 15 S slash import slash export slash G, this basically says from lines 11 to 15, do this global substitution for import and export. So watch 11 through 15. You see these five lines here had the replacement, but just those five lines. The rest of the lines that had import in the name are okay. Let me you to undo. So ranges are very cool once you get the hang of them. The way ranges work is you do basically, so colon and then maybe a line number. So line 21, for example, if I do colon 21 command, I'm just using command as an example command, but it could be any command, any built in Vim command would say, go run this command on line 21. Now, if you wanted to give it a different range, uh, you could do something like 
period command. Period command means run this command on the line we're currently on. You typically don't have to do that. Many of the built-in Vim commands default to always being on the line you're currently on. Now, some of them default to being percent sign command. For example, colon write is actually percent write, meaning write the entire document. But if you wanted to, I mean, if you were crazy, you could do period write. And that writes the line you're on. For example, if you wrote a hundred line document here and then did colon period write, it's going to write the one line that you happen to be on, but not write the rest of the file. And it's kind of crazy, right? Or you could specify a range. You could do one through five write, and it's going to only write the first five lines of that document. Other than the period for the current line and the percent symbol for every line in the document, the dollar symbol is alias for the last line. So if I did dollar symbol right, it's only going to write the last line of the document. So if I did something like five comma dollar symbol command, it's going to run the command on lines five through the last line of the document. So if I did period comma dollar symbol, that's probably one of the more common commands people run. It's that's taking a range from the line I'm currently on all, all the way to the end of the document. Another useful one is period, comma, period, and then plus a number, say plus five. And what this does is the line I'm currently on plus five lines. So six lines in total. I hope that makes sense. Now let's talk about one of the most powerful commands here in Vim, and that, that is the G command. The way the G command works, this is a, a global command is what G stands for. And the format, the basic format is colon G slash pattern slash command. So it basically says, go out, find this pattern, and then run this command on every line that included that pattern. Now, unlike the substitution command we ran earlier, the S command, colon S, uh, that defaults to only being applied to the line you're on. The G command defaults to being every line in the document. So it technically, it's really percent symbol G slash pattern slash command. So let's see this in action. So if I do colon G import, go find every line that has the word import in it slash and then run this command on it. I'm going to do D for delete. Every line that had the word import in it was just deleted. Let me undo to get that back there. Now as cool as the G command is, the inverse is probably even more useful. So if I do colon G exclamation slash import slash D, it is basically saying, uh, go out and run this command on every line that doesn't include import. So all the lines with import are fine, but all the lines that don't include the word import, we're going to delete those. So every line that did not include the word import was just deleted from this document. Now, obviously, I want to undo that. For sake of completeness, if you wanted to, instead of writing G exclamation, you could just do colon V slash import slash D. It's the same command the V stands for in verse. Now let's combine some of these aliases and these ranges with the G command and show you some really interesting stuff. How many times have you written a document, uh, whether it be uh, essay or something, and then you realize, you know what? I needed that to be double spaced. Well, this is very easy to do with Vim with the G command. So we could do colon G slash, and then the pattern we want to find, we want to find this pattern, the caret symbol. The caret symbol signifies the beginning of every line. So basically, we're finding every line in this document. Slash, and what is the command we want to run on every line in this document? Let's run the put command. So PU space equals, and then what we want to put. So I'm going to do this backslash because I need to escape this quotation mark here. And then inside the quotes, I'm going to do backslash in for create a new line. And then once again, escape quotation marks. I hope that makes sense. Again, let me run through this really quick. So we're saying go out and find the start of every line. That's what the caret symbol means. And then the command I want you to run on every line is put a new line break. We just made this double space. Let me GG to get back to the top of the document. Another thing a lot of people often want to do is get rid of blank lines. So we just created all these empty lines. How do you get rid of them? Well, you could use the G command to do this as well. I could do colon G slash and then the pattern we want to look for this time is the caret symbol, meaning go find the start of every line in this document. And I'm going to do a backslash S asterisk symbol. The backslash s asterisk means zero or more white space characters. 
and then I'm gonna do dollar symbol, meaning the end of the line, and then slash, and then the command we wanna run on this, let's just do D for delete. So if I hit enter right now, every line that was an empty line is gone. Let me GG back to the top of the document. Another thing people often wanna do with the G command is to uh, basically find every line that includes a pattern and then copy it or move it to another area of the document. So if I did a colon G slash, and once again, we'll use import. Every line that includes the word import slash, and then I'm gonna do T dollar symbol. And this basically says, take those lines that include the word import and copy them to the end of the file. So let me hit enter. And now every line that had the word import in it is placed at the end of the document. It's copied there. Now the original lines that had import are also still in the document. So let me undo what we just did. I'm gonna go back to the top of the document. I'm gonna run that same command, except this time instead of G slash import slash T dollar symbol, I'm gonna do M dollar symbol. And this moves the lines to dollar symbol, the end of the file. So this doesn't copy them, it actually moves them from their current position to the end of the document. So now all those lines that had import in them are actually at the end of the file. If I GG to go back to the top of the document, the imports that were at the top are no longer there because again, they've been moved. One last thing I wanna show you, just to show you the power of G. I don't know how useful this command would be, but it, it's kinda neat. I'm gonna do colon G slash, and then the caret symbol slash, and then I'm gonna run this command, M for move, and zero, move it basically to the first line of the document. So it's gonna find every line in this document and move it to the first line of this document. What this does, it's gonna basically reverse this document. So just in reverse order. So if I shift G, you know, this was the first line of the document. Now it's the last. This was the second line of the document. Now it's second to the last. I hope that makes sense. We just basically reversed. Now let me undo everything because this was my actual Xmonad config. I don't want to mess it up. I hope you guys found this very brief look at command mode ranges and the G command in Vim helpful. I know a lot of you guys are trying out Vim and, and once you discover Vim, it really, it's a way of life. Like I could never use another text editor. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Libra Quest, Omri, Paul, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of this episode. Without them, this episode wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all these other fine ladies and gentlemen, all these names you're seeing on the screen. This is all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support me, help me out. I'm over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.